Hey, Dan. Hey, Bijan. How are you? I'm good. I'm excited. Happy quarantine. <laughs> oh, yes. Day, I don't even remember what day it is anymore. Nope. I think they it's Thursday, right? One. Yeah. It is Thursday, I believe. Yep. Um, want to welcome everybody. Uh, we've got a, a small but game group today uh, to talk about airplane. Uh, just want to mention, uh, Bijan and I are going to tell you some, uh, some fun facts about the film. Um, if anybody would like to chime in uh, using the Q&A uh, or chat feature, which is on the bottom of your screen if you're in a Zoom meeting on a computer, uh, if you're on your iPad, it's in the upper right, I believe. Uh, I'm on a laptop, so I see it on the bottom. Please feel free. Um, Bijan, I think uh, we should just mention that we have Captain Over uh, has logged in as an attendee. And the Roger, so, uh, Roger. Kudos to whoever. Yes, Roger, Roger. Kudos to whoever uh, is using that uh, alias. Um, so uh, the thing we always like to talk about, and please feel free to chime in uh, on the Q and A if you can post your answers. Is we always like to talk about when was the first time you've seen these these films. So you want to go first, Bijan? When was the first time you saw Airplane? Uh, this is another one I think I saw on TV first. I think when I was a lot younger, that's how I got really exposed to a lot of the movies that I had really no idea about. And I think seeing parts of Airplane uh, on TV and just finding it absolutely hilarious and then being like, oh, I need to see this whole thing. And then seeing the kind of un-TV version, <laughs> which um, was, you know, a lot more hilarious and funny. And, I, you know, it, it's just that, that, that was my first experience with it and how I, how I got acclimated to it. I actually had to think about it a bit, but I, I remember very clearly when I when I asked my sister if she remembers the same thing. Uh, but I saw it at our local drive-in when I was ten. That's uh, awesome. And, and yes, and she and I, you know, were camped out on the roof of the car in our sleeping bags, um, and we had this really cool old-school drive-in theater not too far from where I lived. Uh, and that's where I, I distinctly remember seeing it there, and she confirmed that because I thought I might have been imagining it. Is it still um, operating? Uh, no, God, no. I wish it was. I mean, they went, uh, but it was the old style where you put the speakers in your car. You know, you remember that? Yes. And then, uh, then they went to, they switched over to like FM radio yep. for a little bit. And then they, they shut down years ago because they built a huge multiplex uh, down the street and people stopped going to the drive-in. That's so, a shame. They'd be making money right now. They would be. That's right. <laughs> That's probably the one place you can go to watch a movie yeah. in public. Uh, so I think a little bit of background, you know, I think everybody obviously has seen the film. Um, and again, if you want to chime in with your thoughts, on, we, we'll read them out loud about the first time you saw the film. Uh, this is obviously a parody of the classic uh, 1970s disaster movies like Poseidon Adventure and Towering Inferno and the Airport series. Uh, but it's actually based on a, a movie called Zero Hour, which was released in 1957 believe it or not. And it is available on Amazon Prime. And if you have like nothing to do, like we're all looking for stuff to do while we're sitting at home, killing time, waiting to be able to leave our house. If you watch Zero Hour, like if you're insane enough like I am to watch Zero Hour back to back with Airplane, you're gonna pick up all this. They literally take lines word for word from Zero Hour and use them in Airplane. So um, the main character's name is Ted Stryker and they actually have the line, uh, uh, we need to find someone who can fly this plane, who can, not only can fly this plane, but didn't have fish for dinner. And it's the direct lift. They weren't playing it for laughs, obviously. Uh -huh. uh, but, it, you know, you can do a little Mystery Science Theater 3000 type thing and, and watch it. It's so similar. Uh, I actually found out, Bijan, that the producers had to get permission to do a remake of Zero Hour. They had to call this one a remake because it's like literally the same script and wow. the same story and everything is uh, so, you know, it is. I, I looked. It is on Amazon Prime if you're so inclined. Uh, now, I think it's Zero Hour was supposed to be a serious piece, not a uh, Yes. <laughs> well, that's what they, I guess that's what they thought. I guess now looking at it through the lens of Airplane, maybe not so much anymore. Uh, but, you know, uh, that is the way of the world. You know, and it was a Canadian film. I do remember that. That's uh, I, I don't remember if there's any, there's nobody real famous in it, but uh, it's scary how exact it is. Uh, I mean, you could you could follow the plot like all the way through. The, all the characters are virtually the same. Uh, it's it's really really funny to do that. Uh, and so uh, you know, the uh, we should talk a little bit about um, the production team. This is a, a Zucker Abraham Zucker production. Uh, they had done Kentucky Fried Movie, which is a great great funny movie if you've never seen that. Uh, and this was sort of like their first non 
sketch film that had a plot from beginning to end. And it has, I think, Bijan, tell me if, if I think you would agree, and everybody who's, who's listening in, I'm sure would agree if you've watched it recently, there's so many jokes buried in this. You have to watch it multiple times just to get everything. So uh, yes. you, want, you want to talk about the, the first, it's one of the first ones. You want to talk about the, uh, the PA announcers? Yes, well, um, I, I think I really like your point about how kind of back to back and you don't really, what, what I think was really different with modern day comedies is the, the jokes I feel seem very sparse <laughs> in modern films. And I think what I love most about Airplane is how it's like every single line in that movie is a got a funny little punchline or you can get some humor out of it. And you're right, you miss a whole bunch of it and you almost have to watch it multiple times to catch everything. But uh, yeah, one of the great parts is in the, very early in the, the movie with the uh, announcers announcing uh, the, the zones for where you can move and where you can't move. And they, they actually uh, hired the real life um, announcers who did the announcings for the airport to- uh, In L LAX, right? Yeah, to do the vamps uh, about the zones, uh, which which is really great, and um, and case, they're married. They are they were married in real yeah, life, which which is surprising. You you wouldn't think see that coming, but um, we actually I actually did a little edit, so you're gonna see after we do some more fun facts about the film. I did a quick little highlight reel of some of the better parts of the movie, even though there's a lot of great parts and it was impossible to pick yeah. everything. But uh, so you'll see that scene and a couple others, what we have coming up. Well, the great part about the announcing too, is that if you're not, if you're just listening like peripherally, I was, I was watching it again last night in preparation for this. And, uh, and my, you know, my wife was sitting there just reading a book she'd seen it a million times. And all of a sudden she picked her head up and said, wait a minute, like what's going on in the background with the announcing? Cause you don't realize what's happening right away until it keeps going for like, and it goes for two or three minutes. Yeah. At least. Yep. Uh, and then it gets into real like ridiculousness. Uh, so it was funny watching her reaction to do that. And you want to talk about the, uh, the, the, the part of the glass windows? Yes. You know, this one I actually was thought really found really interesting because uh, my uncle is a pilot. So I'm going to have to ask him how true this is. But uh, apparently in the scene where the um, airplane comes crashing into the windows in the terminal, uh, apparently, a lot of uh, pilots have said that that is actually not too far from plausible because uh, they've said that they can get, sometimes they say they've even touched the nose of the plane to the window. So I'm going to have to call my Uncle George and uh, find out if, if he's ever gotten that close. Makes me feel so much better. <laughs> yeah, right. It makes you think twice now about getting off those planes. Seriously. Uh, we have a comment from our friend Captain Over who uh, is who's, who's chiming in. He says, if you're not prepared for the level of consistent comedy, the PA announcing sets you up for what's ahead. And he's absolutely right. You're yeah, absolutely right. Definitely. I mean, every they're, they're firing uh, even, even more than like a Mel Brooks movie. They fire buckshot after buckshot of jokes. And uh, you can't breathe without something more ridiculous happening after the next. Um, but I think, you know, what was great, what a lot of people don't really remember, is that Leslie Nielsen, because he's so associated with this movie and like the Naked Gun movies and everything that happened after that, he was not a comedy actor prior to this movie. He was a real serious, dramatic actor. And uh, that was one of the reasons why they hired him, because they figured he could deliver that deadpan. And, and he and Robert Stack and Lloyd Bridges were not comedy guys at all and you know it makes it even funnier that they're so straight-faced and deadpan throughout uh, the entire film um but you know i guess uh, he was getting these like older grandfather parts at that point and so now uh they originally wanted do you remember who they originally wanted Bijan, for the leslie nielsen role uh oh my gosh i can't remember. Gonna, i put him on the spot do you happen to remember uh no they i wanted, remember they wanted dom de Dom Dom Dillies. Dillies? Remember, wow. Yes, remember him? Yeah. Uh, but the, the directors, uh, I guess they fought the studio on that one. They got Leslie Nielsen. And he had a whole second career. I mean, his whole that's really what you remember him for, right? I mean, every now and then you see him pop up uh, doing guest shots on like some old TV shows. He was on MASH. He was on a bunch of other shows. He plays a very, almost like not, not even a good guy a lot of times. He plays the bad guy. And it's hard to imagine that that's Leslie Nielsen because you're so used to him yeah in these movies that was very uh, fascinating for me because i really 
don't even recognize him as a serious actor because right. all I really know him from is comedic roles. So right. I was like, wait, most people do. Serious actor before this. So. Right. And Julie Haggerty, this was Julie Haggerty's first movie. And she was a model. And then she went, but right after this came out, she became really in demand. And she was in, um, she did the Woody Allen movie, which was called The Midsummer Night Sex Comedy. And uh, she did a great movie with Albert Brooks called Lost in America, which is uh, one of, a really, really, really great film. Um, she did What About Bob? And she was just, last year, she was in Marriage Story. Wow. She plays uh, Scarlett Johansson's mother. So she's still working. Uh, you know, people always say, whatever happened to Julie Haggerty? They're not, they're not paying attention close enough. Um, and you remember, of course, my favorite part is the lady who speaks jive. Yes, which is I added that by, in just for you. That's right. Well, you have to. I mean, that was, you know, everybody, rem I'm sure people uh, watch, uh, listening will remember, that was Barbara Billingsley, who was the mom on Leave it to Beaver. And the only reason she got the part was because they wanted Harriet Nelson from The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. And she didn't want to do it because there was so much foul language in the movie. So Barbara Billingsley did it. And probably today, Barbara Billingsley's more famous for that than for Leave it to Beaver because, I mean, I don't know how many people still watch Leave it to Beaver. Um, and, uh, and, and we have a comment, and actually this is very true. I want to just, there's another comment from Rebecca who says, I don't think that joke would fly today. I think she's talking about the jive. There's Probably. a lot of jokes that would not There's fly. a lot of jokes that wouldn't <laughs> fly today. Uh, I think the, uh, the part when the, you know, with the lady in hysterics when they're lining up to slap her, that's probably not going to go over very well. Although apparently she, the actress who was the one having the hysterics, is the one who suggested it, said, no, just line them all up and let them hit me. And, <laughs> and they yeah, had the gun know, and the crowbar. What's funny is too, I think uh, also what's so timeless about bits like that are that the internet has kind of picked it up where they'll, you know, everything gets memeified nowadays for those of you who don't know what a meme is. It's basically a picture or a oh, video God. segment with words over it. But there's definitely been a couple of scenes from uh, Airplane that have been memeified. And to me, that's like the pinnacle of making it in internet history nowadays. So uh, that one and the, the scene where he's running through the lobby and has to like avoid everyone and punches everyone. Uh, oh, that I've actually best, seen yeah. that a lot nowadays where people say like me going to the grocery store. <laughs> right, uh, right, yeah. That's very funny. It's true. And there were so many, I mean, you know, obviously, I guess you really, if you were of that age and of a certain age and that when the movie came out, which was 1980, um, there's a lot of inside jokes that you probably a modern audience really wouldn't know um, and certain things that nobody would know unless you unless you have the you know the wonders of the internet to tell you this but uh, you remember the lady who's trying to put makeup on and it keeps going all over her face mm -hmm. that was the Zucker brothers mom wow. that was their actual mom who was who's playing that part and the other one the big inside joke which I never I could never quite put my finger on until I, I was reading it yesterday is um, you remember the nun who has the guitar yep you remember she plays that so that's Maureen McGovern, and Maureen McGovern uh, sings the theme song to, um, uh, she's, remember she did The Morning After from The Poseidon Adventure, and she did the uh, theme song from The Towering Inferno. So she had a connection to those disaster movies. And she also, at the time that the movie was made, there was a sitcom, which I'm sure nobody but someone like me who was raised by the Zenith in their living room remembers. Uh, there, was a, there was a comedy, a sitcom called Angie, which Donna Pescat, who was in Saturday Night Fever with John Travolta, and Robert Hayes plays her husband on the show, and she sang the theme song for that too. So there's the connection with Robert Hayes and the, and the show, and I had no idea until I was watching the credits again, because it's been a long time since I've seen the movie all the way through. I always catch it on TV at various spots, and uh, that it was Maureen McGovern, and she, did, and she had that connection to the, uh, to the disaster films, which I thought was hysterical. And, uh, you know, there's a, there was something about, uh, do you remember, uh, there was a thing about how much the budget was and how quickly they spent it? Uh, yeah. There's some crazy I, story about that, too. They, they spent it very quickly, but what I think is very interesting, especially from, um, you know, kind of a theater manager point of view, because we're always looking at numbers and how well a movie performs, but uh, the movie actually in the first two days of um, opening in theaters, uh, grossed the entire production budget. So it was a big success. And uh, I think that's, that's very interesting, especially for a comedy to do so well right off the bat. Yep. Uh, Re Rebecca actually just asked another question saying she's trying to figure out if the beach scene was a reference to Greece or to Blue Lagoon. It's actually a reference to From Here to Eternity. Um, there's a very famous scene in that movie with Burt Lancaster and Deborah Carr on the beach and the waves uh, come splashing up, not, not quite with all the seaweed and sand that happens in the movie. 
Um, but that's, that's the, I believe that's the reference they were going for um, because Greece had just come out the year before this or two years before this and Blue Lagoon came out the same year. So it, it is similar, but it probably wasn't the, uh, wasn't the same thing. And uh, there's a lot of, if you ever, it's a really, really famous scene. It's almost always the one that you see, the clip that you see when people talk about from here to eternity. Uh, and there's a really famous um, uh, Sid Caesar parody of it where they, get, they have people throwing water on them. Uh, and in this case, they got the seaweed all tangled up <laughs> in their faces, which was really, really great. Yeah. That's um, and, uh, you know, it, with the, I guess they must have done something right because, you know, in, in 2010, uh, this, the film was uh, selected for preservation by the Library of Congress. So it's been uh, for being culturally, I have to say it right, culturally, historically, and aesthetically significant. So what does that tell you? That's I don't know right. if they ever thought that would happen when they were making the film. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, if That's you had a, to pick films to go into the <laughs> yeah, know, I, I guess industry, who would think the airplane? But I think it's well deserved. I think it belongs there. And, and uh, they and they did. You know, you remember that after this one, they had a so they did some really great stuff. I mean, we talked about the Naked Gun movies with Leslie Nielsen, but they did Top Secret, which is one of my favorite movies. Uh, with um, that was that was Val Kilmer, right? Uh, Top Secret was like Val Kilmer's first movie, yep. right before Top Gun. Um, which was really funny. And I didn't even remember this. They also did, um, they didn't write the script, but they directed it. There's a really, really funny movie from like the late 80s called Ruthless People, which we should actually do in one of these one point because it is hysterically funny and like one of the great, like complicated comedy scripts where with Danny DeVito and Bette Midler and um, uh, like really, really hysterical movie. And I had, I totally had forgotten that they did that one too because it's not really the same type of movie is Airplane and Top Secret where like everything, every other line is a joke. Uh, it's, it's like, it's just one of those great ones. Um, and and Ca Captain Over would like us to mention the control tower scenes, <laughs> which is great. You know, I picked the wrong week to quit, uh, quit sniffing glue. Yeah, drinking, uh, sniffing glue, smoking. <laughs> right. Do you remember the sequel? Did you ever watch, did you ever see Airplane 2? Uh, I saw part of it. I remember I didn't really like it as much. The only thing it really has going for it is it has William Shatner. <laughs> Shatner, because remember, it's like a space, it's like a space shuttle thing. Yes, it, yeah, like, like a space shuttle. And yeah. Shatner is the guy in the tower on the moon. That's and he funny. has like the typical, you know, Shatnerisms, uh, which it's I was. Good thing he's not on the plane because there could have been something on the wing. <laughs> right, that's right. You're right. You would think they would have gotten him for that, right? Yeah. yeah. That's, I tell you, right. That, that episode of Time was great. Um, and I guess we should also mention uh, Captain Over is giving himself a shout out. The the questions that he asks the kid in the cockpit. Yep. Uh, I mean, some of those, you know, I've like, have you ever been in a prison camp? <laughs> you know, like some right. of those are, have you are ever seen a grown funny man still, naked? but there are a couple that are like, whoa, can't, right. can't do that anymore. Right. But, I think um, the DVD extras actually talk about the ones they cut, which were oh, wow. way worse than what <laughs> ended up in the movie. Yeah, I got to check that out. <laughs> some of them were like really, really, really risque. Well, and, uh, of some of those favorite scenes, uh, we're going to cut now to some uh, highlight reel, some of my favorite scenes, some of Dan's favorite scenes that we pulled to show you. It's not very long. It's only about six minutes, but uh, enjoy, have a chuckle, and we'll be right back with some fun trivia and some upcoming stuff. All right, guys? That's right. Let her roll.
they say. See a brother get that booty act em. <laughs> Lay it down and smack him, yak him. Cold got to be. Yo, <laughs> shit. Flight 209, are you are cleared for takeoff? Roger. Huh? LA departure frequency 123.9. Roger. Huh? Request vector. Over. What? Flight 209, are clear for vector 324. <laughs> Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? Now I radio clearance over. That's clearance over. Over. Roger. Huh? Roger, over. What? What? Who? I was in the Air Force, stationed in Drambui, off the Barbary Coast. I used to hang out at the Magumbo Bar. It was a rough place, the seediest dive on the wharf, populated with every reject and cutthroat from Bombay to Calcutta. It was worse than Detroit. Can I get you something? Some more folk butter laying into the bone, jacking me up. Tight me. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Cutty say can't hang. Oh, Stewardess, I speak jive. Oh, good. He said that he's in great pain and he wants to know if you can help him. All right. Would you tell him to just relax and I'll be back as soon as I can with some medicine? Just hang loose, blood. She's going to catch up on the rebound on the med side. What it is, big mama? My mama didn't raise no dummies. I duck her rap. Cut me some slack, Jack. Chomp the one to help, chomp don't get the help. Say can't hang, say seven up. Jive ass dude don't got no brains in him. Cream? No, thank you. I take it back. Like my man. You better tell the captain we've got to land as soon as we can. This woman has to be gotten to a hospital. A hospital? What is it? It's a big building with patients, but that's not important right now. Tell the captain I must speak to him. Certainly. Captain, how soon can you land? I can't tell. You can tell me I'm a doctor. No, I mean, I'm just not sure. Or can't you take a guess? Well, not for another two hours. You can't take a guess for another two hours? This is Captain Over speaking. Been a little bumpy up here, but we'll be past it in a few minutes. Uh, a couple points of interest. We're now flying over Hoover Dam. And a little later on, we'll pass just the south of the Grand Canyon. Meanwhile, relax and enjoy your flight. Now we know okay. what we're up against. Every passenger on this plane will have fish for dinner. We'll become violently ill in the next half hour. Just how serious is it, Doctor? Extremely serious. Starts with a slight fever, dryness of the throat. As the virus penetrates the red blood cells, the victim becomes dizzy. Because we experience an itching, a rash. From there, the poison goes to work on the central nervous system, causing severe muscle spasms, followed by the inevitable grueling. At this point, the entire digestive system collapses, accompanied by uncontrollable flatulence, until finally the poor bastard is reduced to a quivering, wasted piece of jelly. Chief, we got fog right down to the deck, every place east of the Rockies. There's no possible place they can land, they'll have to come through to Chicago. Looks like I picked the wrong week to quit smoking. Don't panic. On the belt line of the automatic pipe, there's a hollow tube. Now that is the manual inflation nozzle. Pull it out and blow on it. What the hell's going on up there? This is due to periodic air pockets we encountered. There's no reason to become alarmed, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your flight. By the way, is there anyone on board who knows how to fly a plane? The stewardess said... Both pilots. Can you fly this plane and land it? Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Doctor, I've checked everyone. Mr. Stryker's the only one. What flying experience have you had? Oh, I flew single-engine fighters in the Air Force, but this plane has four engines. It's an entirely different kind of flying, altogether. It's, it's an, an entirely, entirely different, different kind, kind of flying. flying. I can't stand it anymore. I've got to get out of here. I've got to get out of here. Oh, down, get a hold of yourself. Just please, let me handle this. I've got to get out of here. Calm down, now get back to your seat. I'll take care of this. Calm down, Calm down. get a hold of yourself. Do you run on the phone? Everything's been pulled by your feet. Sister, please, I'll handle this. I've got to get out of here. I've got to get out of here. I've got to get out of here. Excuse me, we'd like you to have this flower. Excuse me, sir, would you... 
Donations to the Reverend Moon. Jews for Jesus. Read about Jehovah's Witness. How about Buddhism? Help Jerry's kids. Oh, yeah. Scientology. Or nuclear power. Johnny, what can you make out of this? This? Well, I can make a cap. Or a brooch. A pterodactyl. Could you... um... How you doing, honey? Jack, I'm so hot, I'm burning up. I'll turn on some air. Minutes. They could be miles, of course. That's impossible. They're on instruments. This is going to be a real sweat. Gunderson, let me know when you get anything. Got a cigarette, Nelson? I can't take much more of this. Looks like I picked the wrong week to quit amphetamines. Would you like a little whiskey, man? Certainly not. How are the passengers doing? I won't deceive you, Mr. Stryker. We're running out of time. Surely there must be something you can do. I'm doing everything I can. Now stop calling me Shirley. I don't know about you, but I love Barbara Billingsley more and more every time I see her. <laughs> yeah, it's so <laughs> funny. Because she's got such a distinct voice, too. It's 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 so recognizable. And you think, right. You know, right. And you know, you know what we forgot to mention, you know, it's, it's funny with everybody else we talked about before, like Peter Graves, who, you know, everybody knew from Mission Impossible was another guy who had never really done comedy and he didn't want to do this. And he turned it down, I think, like three or four times until I guess I think the story is his kids read the script because it was sent to him and convinced him that he had to do it. And, you know, the ability to play everything so straight laced is what makes it hysterical. Yes. And uh, he, he was great. I, forgot, yeah. I totally forgot to mention him when I mentioned the other guys before. Very funny, very funny. So we have a couple of trivia questions for everybody and we'll give everyone a chance to answer uh, if you want to play along. Um, Bijan, why don't you go ahead and, and ask the first one? Okay, the first one uh, I think is very good. It is uh, which company was the only airline to buy the film for their in-flight entertainment? So which which film which flight could you go which flight company could you see airplane on an airplane well, you know what we should give them a little bit of a hint because it's, it's a little difficult it's not it's not an american airline we've got we've got one one answer unfortunately it's wrong it's twa captain that's over right. but it's, no, it's not, not right. twa it it's it's a tricky one i'll give you that that was anybody a good else want to anybody else want to guess it's not an American airline. Well, we, I think Sarah's got her hand raised. Sarah, you want to you wanna, uh, type your answer in the uh, chat or in the Q&A? Anybody, anybody else who wants to take a guess? They actually, they, they make fun of this too. In the, uh, in the, remember there's a part towards the end when they're watching the movie and uh, it's another disaster movie. It's a, the film within the, the, the in-flight film. Is a, is a plane crash? Oh, Rebecca guessed El Al. Nope. And Claire guessed El Al. Nope. Nope. Good, good guesses. Good guesses. Not, not one of those. Not one of those. Sarah guessed Air France. Nope. Good guess, but no. Anybody else going once? Going twice? Right, Bijan, what's the answer? It's Aeromexico. Si, sí, muy bueno. Those flights down to Mexico City or uh, Cozumel, I guess you could have watched the airplane. Aero. Yep. <laughs> Could have watched airplane on an airplane. I think that airplane would have been worth the ticket in itself, just to say you watched airplane on an airplane. <laughs> right. Well, at least it wasn't that one. You remember the one uh, about the, uh, the the soccer team in the Andes? I mean, thank God. They oh yes, that. alive. Yeah. yeah, that's that one is definitely not happening. I actually <laughs> saw that movie on an airplane. Yeah, you're. you're I couldn't great believe they were that. showing it, and I was young. It scared the bejesus out of me. Yeah, somebody wasn't thinking uh, thinking straight on that. <laughs> I couldn't one. believe it. <laughs> All right, what's the next question? All right, the next one is which Keeping Up with the Kardashians member auditioned for a role in the film? So who on Keeping Up with the Kardashians? I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with that little show, but um, who? Do you it's think? just like, uh, it's like just the modern day version of Leave it to Beaver. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> who do you think would be, who would want to be? Think about, think about that. Oh, Sarah, Sarah got it. 
Oh, so, yes, we have a winner. We have a winner. Yeah. Actually, Re Rebecca gets the two, sort of. Two. Uh, it's a two-time winner. Yeah, Bruce right. or now Caitlyn Jenner. Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> yes. Either answer will take. But, yes, they, he auditioned for uh, the lead, I believe. Um, so. Yeah, he did. He did. I, I think I'm not a good time to remember that I was Bruce Jenner for Halloween one year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and we have one more trivia question. One more trivia question. This will be multiple choice. So we'll make it a little easier for you guys for the last one. The airline used in the movie was repainted, a repainted plane from what airline? So the, the airplane that they used was a repainted airplane from which airline? So your guesses are, was it TWA, American, or Delta? Uh, looks like everybody's uh, mentioning TWA. Captain Over says Delta. Nope, it's not Delta. And it's not American. If you said TWA, you are yeah, they did. Daniel and Rebecca both said TWA. TWA. And, and I, I, should, I, should, I can't let this go. Sarah also mentioned, uh, she, she did add another piece of trivia. You know, uh, the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar part was supposed to be Pete Rose. Oh, wow. Uh, yes, but baseball season was in full swing. So I guess, I guess he couldn't get away. It's a good thing uh, basketball season wasn't it. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And it's funny because when I was a kid, I mean, I, I totally knew, I had no idea. I knew who Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was, but I just thought it was a guy who looked like him, like the kid in the movie who thinks it really is him. I was the exact opposite. I was like, nah, I can't really be him. Why would he be in a movie? He's playing he, basketball. He's in another one of my favorite movies, which was, uh, which is the, the Bruce, Bruce Lee, Lee movie. One. It was uh, not Enter the Dragon, but he was in the, the unfinished Bruce Lee one where. Oh, yeah. Oh, shoot. Anybody who, anybody on remember the name of that one? Yeah, I can't, I can't remember what it is now. It's the one where he it climbed was, uh, the tower. Yeah, it was, it was the last Bruce Lee movie because he was, yeah, he was yeah. Kareem's uh, instructor. Yes, yeah. He got me in the he movie. Was like one of the big boss guys. In oh, the, my yeah. God. I can't believe I'm blanking on it. Yeah, it's been a I, long day. Uh, and, we, and I have to also point out, just because uh, some, my, my daughter caught this, um, there is one cameo, which I thought was the greatest, which was Ethel Merman. And, uh, you know, it was her last film appearance before she passed away. Ethel Merman, you know, she was in Broadway. She was in a, it's a mad, 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 mad world. And she's in for one joke. She's there for one, one line. I wonder how much she got in the per diem. Yeah, really. Appear. I was Game of Death. That was the Bruce Game of Death, right. Sorry. Oh, my God. Totally vapor lock on that. All right. Well, I want to, uh, I think we should thank everybody for coming. This was great. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we have a couple of things coming up we want to make sure you're all uh, aware of, and you can always find this information on our website, which is Virtual Playhouse. So um, uh, starting tomorrow, we have uh, for streaming a great documentary called Slay the Dragon, which is about uh, political gerrymandering. Uh, we have The Booksellers. Um, Ejen, what's, talk a little bit about the booksellers. That's uh, about yeah, the Strand book story. Yeah, it's about um, basically the New York City um, book, uh, like the storefront bookstores and basically like book collecting. And uh, I thought it looked really fascinating because it's all kind of about how um, the bookstores have changed and adapted through the kind of Amazon craze because at uh, certain points, you know, in, in New York City, you would get judged for kind of going into a bookstore and, you know, if you didn't ask for the right thing or the people were there just reading and didn't want to be bothered, uh, you know, reading. And unfortunately, a lot of them went out of business, but there's still, you know, a few that are still operating and how kind of uh, the younger generation now is not um, reading things on an iPad or Kindle, but now prefer books. So um, the, the storefront bookstores are kind of beginning to come back. And um, it's, it's really, it looks like it's very well shot and very um, interesting. So if you have a chance, definitely, I would suggest checking it out. I know I'm going to rent it and watch it. Um, yeah, if you're a book lover, it's definitely worth it. You know, and we've, you, got, um, and we've got Fantastic Fungi coming yep. back. Yes, um, yeah. This movie is it's unbelievable um, really really well and if you haven't heard about it or checked it out um give it a it's all about mushrooms and how like their ability to kind of help the planet and all the amazing fantastical things that they do also shot really beautifully because i you know some of those mushrooms are just really pretty looking and they do a great job filming it so if you it's a really a really amazing film uh and then on tuesday this coming tuesday we have um 
uh, our Classic Tuesday series. We're doing a film called Tunes of Glory. It's the 60th anniversary. It's uh, probably not as well known as some of the others, but it's a really great film, British film with Alec Guinness and John Mills. Uh, you definitely will want to check that out with John Farr does a really great uh, talk uh, and, uh, and gives you a lot of information about the film, the making of and the history of it and takes questions. Uh, that's Tuesday night. Uh, we have um, an author uh, coming up. We have the, uh, the book Codename, I'm gonna mispronounce it, but it's Codename Helene. Helene. Yes. Is it Helene or Hel Helene? Yeah, Helene. Helene. Helene, which is a really, really, uh, getting some great buzz. We have the, the author coming uh, virtually to do a talk on that. Um, that. And then two weeks from today, uh, Bijan and I are gonna be back and we're gonna be talking about Clue. Uh, if you remember Clue with uh, Madeline Kahn and Martin Mull, um, really great cast, Christopher Lloyd. Uh, that's a lot of fun. Um, it's, it was uh, in, in theaters in the late 80s. Um, one of my all-time favorites. You can watch it any, any time, day or night. If I come across it on TV, I stop and watch. Uh, oh, and we should also, like, we can't forget the, um, the Cat Video Fest. Yes. Which is exactly what it sounds like. So if you, all of this is on our website um, under Virtual Playhouse. Uh, so if you, you can check it out, if you people are looking for stuff to do uh, while we're all uh, making our way through this uh, new world order that we're in, uh, waiting for things to get back to normal. There's a lot of great content on there uh, that we're happy to bring to you. And we hope you'll check it out. And we hope we'll see you back here in a couple of weeks. Any, any, last, any last words? Uh, no, just, uh, you know, come check us out. And uh, if you've got any suggestions or any movies you want to see, you can either send us an email at info at Bedford Playhouse and go on our website. Again, um, please, 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 the theater is shut down. So any donations you can make, we really, really appreciate it and really goes to helping us and are continuing our mission of uh, bringing arts and entertainment to the community. So uh, tell your friends. Thanks so much for coming. We really appreciate it. We love you all. And um, I think we've got to go land a plane, right, Dan? That's right, yeah. They're calling <laughs> I hope you the didn't have to fish. Have a good night, everybody. Bye, guys.